Hello, Warden and Charlie. It is great to see you both and the wonderful Berkshire managers. Our thanks for everything that you do. My name is Rajiv Agarwal, and I am from New Jersey. My question is on market timing. You have always said that it is impossible to time the markets. Yet, if we look at your track record, you have had amazing timings with some of your key decisions. You got out of the stock markets in 1969-70. You got back in 72, 72, 74, when the markets were really cheap. You did the same thing in 87, 99, 2000. And today, we are sitting on a significant amount of cash when the markets are going down. My question is, how do you time the big market moves so well? Uh, we'd like to offer you a job first. <laughs> <laughs> I will take it. <laughs> the, uh, the interesting thing is, uh, you know, obviously, we haven't the faintest idea what the stock market is going to do when it opens on Monday. We never have had. We have never made, Charlie and I, I don't think, in all the time we've worked together, and I'll tell you something later on maybe about how learning takes place, but we have, we have never, uh, I don't think we've ever made a decision that, that where either one of us has either said or been thinking we should buy or sell based on what the market is going to do. Uh, no. Or, or for that matter, on, on what the economy is going to do. We, we don't know. And the interesting thing is, uh, some, sometimes I get some credit someplace for the fact that, you know, how wonderful it was that we were optimistic in 2008 and when everybody was down on stocks and all that sort of thing. You know, we, we, we spent a big percentage of our net worth at a very dumb time. <laughs> and and I, I shouldn't say we, it's I. We spent about 15 or $16 billion, which was a lot bigger to us then than it is now. We spent it in the last few weeks, there were a period of three or four weeks between Wrigley and Goldman Sachs and General, we, at a terrible time, as it turned out. I mean, I, I didn't think I didn't know whether it was going to be a good time or a bad time, but it was a really dumb time. And I wrote an article for the New York Times and Buy America and, and all these things. Well, if I'd had any sense of timing and waited six months until I think the low was in March, and in fact, um, I think I was on CNBC maybe that day or something. But but uh, I totally missed that opportunity. I totally missed, you know, in March of, of, of 2020. Uh, we, we, we have not been good at timing. We have, we have been reasonably good at figuring out when we were getting enough for our money. And we had no, had no idea when we bought anything. Well, we always hoped it would go down for a while so we could buy more, and we hoped even after we were done buying and ran out of money that if it was cheap, the company would keep buying, in effect, taking our interest up. I mean, that's stuff you could, you could learn it in fourth grade, but, but it's not what's taught in school. And, I mean, it, it, so never give us any credit. Well, actually, give us all the credit. In, I mean, go out and tell everybody how smart we are, but we aren't. <laughs> they, it, we, we, we haven't ever timed anything. We've never figured out insights into the economy. I mean, when I was, when I was 11 years old, March, March 12th, I guess, 1942, you know, at, uh, March 11th, you know, that, I bought stock when the Dow was 90, well, it was 101 in the morning. It was 99 at the end of the day, I think. And, uh, you know, now it's 34,000 or maybe it's a thousand less than it was on Thursday. <laughs> it, uh, but, you know, I just, you know, it's one decision. 